All right, I think uh, this should be enough. So um, welcome everyone. Um, I want to start by thanking you all for taking the time uh, to attend this webinar. Uh, my name is Amro Eid, uh, the Director of Business Development at the FreeMind Group. Uh, a quick introduction about FreeMind, uh, really for the past two decades, um, our purpose is to help life science entities uh, raise non-dilutive capital from both US federal sources and private foundations. Um, so this webinar will serve as an, int an introduction uh, to the SBIR, STTR funding mechanisms and opportunities. Um, of course, along the presentation, if you have any questions, please write them down in the Q&A section. Uh, and I'll try to go through them one by one at the end if we do have enough time. Um, also, don't worry about writing things down now. Um, I will be sending you the slide deck and the uploaded video on YouTube, um, hopefully uh, uh, by, by next week. So you'll have plenty of time to review um, on your own. Okay, so we're going to start with the funding landscape. Um, and as you can see, it really covers the entire research and development process uh, from proof of concept discovery phase all the way to clinical trials. Um, but as you can see, there are different mechanisms with different funding levels that fund different stages of development throughout uh, the R&D process. So uh, for early stage projects, one can expect between 200 to $500,000. For more, more advanced preclinical moving into, into phase one, um, one can expect between half a million uh, and $3 million. And for phase two and three, it can go much, much more. Also, as you can see, uh, the SBIR or SCTR programs are involved in all stages of development. Uh, so it's a great funding mechanism for small businesses seeking funding uh, for all stages. So uh, moving on to the most famous and largest agency uh, in the US um, to, to fund um, human health related life sciences is the National Institutes of Health, the NIH. Uh, and out of the $60 billion funding landscape from U.S. federal sources, the vast majority comes from the NIH, uh, which is about $42 billion for this year. For those who are not so familiar with the NIH, it consists of 27 institutes and centers uh, that really fund all types of science related to human health. Now, looking at the NIH categorical spending, we can see that it really covers any illness known to man. Um, so we can see where the NIH is actually spending its money here. Uh, now, before you start adding up these numbers, it is really important to note that these categories are not mutually exclusive. Uh, there's a lot of overlap. For example, we can see um, areas in neurosciences, brain disorders, and neurodegenerative diseases at the same time. So there's a lot of overlap. If you're talking about HIV, AIDS, infectious diseases as well. So there's a lot of overlap here and, and, and funding is available to all types of projects to deal with human health. Now, um, as I mentioned, this webinar will serve as an overview to SBIR and STTR programs. So starting uh, with some explanations here. So SBIR stands for Small Business Innovation Research and STTR stands for Small Business Technology Transfer. In this webinar, we're going to be discussing some of the features of these programs, uh, mention go over the differences and similarities, in addition to eligibility criteria for the applicants. Uh, we're going to be reviewing various funding opportunities and mechanisms and provide additional information on, on these mechanisms and how to approach them. So starting with the mission um, of these programs, it is really to support the scientific excellence and technological innovation to build a strong national economy through the investment of federal research funds in critical American priorities. Uh, as for the program goals, they are to stimulate technological innovation, meet federal R&D needs, uh, increase private sector commercialization of innovations uh, derived from federal research and development funding, and really about, it's about fostering and encouraging the participation in, in innovation and entrepreneurship by women and socially or economically disadvantaged persons. In addition, um, the STTR program aims to foster technology transfer through cooperative R&D between small businesses and research institutions. Okay, so some more, more, more uh, information about the SBIR, STTR programs. They are uh, congressionally mandated set-aside programs. 
Um, so you can see here uh, that a percentage is allocated from agencies uh, with a budget greater than, than X uh, um, millions per year. So in the, in the, in the case of the SBIR, about 3.2% um, of, of the extra mural research budget with agencies that has you know, a budget greater than $100 million per year is allocated to fund SBIR programs. Um, so we're talking about almost $3.2 billion uh, minimum spend each year for SBIRs. As for the STTRs, uh, same concept, just different numbers. It's 0.45% uh, for agencies with a budget greater than $1 billion per year. So it's about almost half a billion dollar minimum spend each year. Uh, as for the participating agencies, we do have the uh, Department of Human and Health Services that includes the NIH, CDC, and FDA. We have the Department of Defense, and we also have NSF. All of these agencies uh, have SBIR and SCTR programs for human health related life sciences. Um, actually, over 5,000 5, new awards are issued on an annual basis from SBIR and SCTRs. Um, for, in this presentation, we're going to be focusing mostly on the NIH and a bit on the NSF, um, given that these are the two most famous institutes, uh, agencies um, that fund these programs. Okay, so what does an SBIR STR firm look like? Uh, the obvious is that only US-based small businesses are eligible for these type of programs and they must meet all of the following criteria. So the company must be for profit. It has to be located in the US with less than 500 uh, full-time employees. The work must be conducted in the US and at least 51% uh, of the company must be US owned and controlled by one or more citizens or permanent uh, residents of the United States. In terms of uh, the VC private equity, it is okay. Um, an awardee may be owned and controlled by more than one VC hedge fund or private equity firm, um, so long as no one such firm owns the majority of the stock. So uh, moving on to some differences, differences between SBR and SCDRs, uh, they, they are similar in many ways, but they also have some differences. Um, and I have uh, uh, the main ones here. So in terms of the partnering requirement uh, for the SBIR, um, you are permitted to partner with research institutions, uh, but are, you're not required, as opposed to the STTR program where you are required to partner with a nonprofit research institution. In terms of the PI, uh, the pr primary employment for the SBIR must be more than 50% with the small business, and that has to be at the time of the award. Um, as for the STTR program, the PI can be employed by either the research institution, partner, or the small business. And it's really advised to check the solicitation. Some specific solicitations, uh, such as academic industrial partnerships, they do have um, some preferences, but generally speaking, uh, the PI can be employed by either. In terms of the work requirement uh, for the SBIR program, um, you have to do it for phase one you have to do um, up to you know, two thirds of the work and you may subcontract up to 33%. As for phase two, it's a 50-50. Uh, so you can subcontract up to 50%, but if you'd like to do 70, 80% of the work on your own and subcontract 20%, that's also fine. As for the STTR programs, uh, the minimum um, that small business um, in terms of, of work uh, effort has to be 40%. 40, 40 uh, followed by a minimum of 30% from the research institution partner, and the remaining is really up to you. Okay, so um, the NIH, SBIR, and STTR programs are structured in different phases. Um, as for the phase one, objective is to establish the technical merit, feasibility, and commercial potential of the proposed R&D project. Um, it's really about determining the quality of performance of the awarded small business um, before providing further federal support in, in the following phase two, um, or, or I can say in terms of uh, finishing the milestones that a phase one would require, and I'll explain more on the next slide. So it's about really a proof of concept type of uh, phase. Uh, as for the award budget, um, both SBIRs and SCTRs do not exceed $250,000 in total costs, but for the SBIR, the project period is for six months, and for the STTRs, it's for one year. <clears throat> so 
So moving on to the phase two uh, of the SBIR and SDR program, it's to continue R&D efforts initiated in phase one, and the funding is based on the results you achieve in the first phase and the scientific and technical merit in addition to the commercial potential uh, of the project proposed in phase two. So definitely in this one, a commercialization plan is required. In terms of uh, the award budget and, and period, it's exactly the same for both SBIR and SDTRs. Uh, in a sense that they, they do not exceed $1.7 million in total uh, over the period of two years. Now, this is what I wanted to mention also. Uh, we also have the option to direct to phase two awards, which many of our clients take. Um, so it's a phase two award issued to small businesses that did, didn't receive a phase one award for that research. Um, it's really designed for small businesses that completed phase one milestones using non-SBIR funds. So if you weren't funded by an SBIR phase one in the past, that doesn't mean that you can't have a phase two directly, which is great. All right, so there's also um, a second phase two award, whereby agencies may award a second phase two to continue a phase two project. Uh, the purpose of this award is to support the next stage of development um, for federally funded SBIR phase two projects to address the famous funding gap known as the value of death um, between the end of the SBIR phase two award and the subsequent round of financing needed for commercialization. Now, this is not so well known, but it's not something new. Uh, the NIH has been offering these type of opportunities for several, several years. Uh, you may know of this as phase two B award, a competing renewal or a bridge award. And I've seen many opportunities like this from different institutes within the NIH, such as the NCI, uh, the National Cancer Institute, the NINDS, the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, uh, NHLBI, the National Heart, Lung and Blood Institute, and many, many more. Uh, worth mentioning, the phase two project period must end before a phase two B award can be issued, uh, generally speaking, no more than 24 months. Okay, another uh, very interesting path that you can take with the SBIR and STTRs is a fast track award. Uh, so the fast track option incorporates a submission and a review process in which both phase one and phase two grant applications are submitted and reviewed together as a single application. Now, because, because both phases undergo review at the same time, uh, the NIH fast track mechanism can reduce or even eliminate the funding gap between these two phases. Now, but the main two questions we ask our clients before uh, applying for a fast track are, number one, can you show a smooth transition between a phase one and phase two? And number two, can you show a clear commercialization plan? Uh, these are two very important questions you need to verify uh, before considering applying to a fast track award uh, where phase one and phase two applications will be submitted and, and awarded together, uh, bringing the total budget up to $2 million, really. So uh, also it's worth pointing out that the NSF, uh, which does have SBIR and SDR programs, the NSF does not offer a fast track option. Okay, so in terms of the standard due dates for these programs, they are every four months on the 5th of January, 5th of April, and 5th of September. Uh, it usually takes around four months to get an initial review and another four months or a total of eight months uh, from the time of application submitted until you see the money. But according to a very uh, a close friend of ours at the NCI's SBIR Development Center, they are working super hard to reduce the time from application to award to six months. And we are starting to seeing that the funding of more than 50% of applications uh, is being within six months. Uh, and that is great. Um, worth mentioning here that some mechanisms have non-standard due dates. Um, so I definitely suggest that you carefully read each solicitation and pay attention to the details. If you don't, you may miss the deadline or other important information. Uh, they might extend some deadlines, sometimes they reduce, uh, they bring it back, you know, several months, really depends on, on, on the situation. So I highly advise you to uh, really go through the solicitation and, and, and check it, cons you know, on, on, a, on a constant basis, almost every, every couple of weeks to see if there are any changes uh, with regards to the solicitation you are pursuing. 
All right, as uh, for the funding routes uh, in terms of the NIH, SBR, STR funding opportunities, we have two uh, main routes. The first one is the solicited approach, uh, which is really, um, you have to address a specific area of interest. There are specific opportunities out there that might be a great fit uh, to your scientific area of expertise or to that specific project that you are proposing. Um, at this point of time, we have about 75 specific solicitations open from uh, the NIH and about 800 have already closed since the beginning of the year. Um, now, if you do not find an opportunity with a, a specific opportunity that fits uh, your project, you you can go for the unsolicited approach or parent announcement or investigator initiated. Uh, you can call it um, how you want. In the SBIR, SCTR world, it is called the omnibus uh, solicitation. Um, so as a matter of fact, 67% of total awards stem out of the parent announcements, which I'll explain uh, in the next slide. So um, here are some examples uh, in terms of the solicited route. If you go on the NIH website uh, and search for the available SPIR, STTR opportunities open at this point of time, you'll find 75 of them uh, from the HHS, well, from the NIH and FDA and CDC. Uh, and here are some examples below. So you can see covering all years of science. We've got cancer prevention, diagnosis and treatment. Uh, I've got NINDS, uh, in Neurological Disorders and Stroke Exploratory Clinical Trials. We have also here the Competing Renewal Awards. We just mentioned the Phase 2B grant uh, for Brain and Behavioral Tools. Another new Renewal Award uh, for Clinical Trials. Um, we've got Complex Technology and Therapeutic Development for Mental Health. We've got things on Alzheimer's Disease and Dementias. Uh, we've got things at Pain Management from the HEAL Initiative. We've got Genetic Variation to Function and Disease. Uh, things have clinical trial optional, things are not allowed, uh, things are clinical trial required. Um, also, we have the NIAD SBIR Phase 2 Clinical Trial Implementation Cooperative Agreement, which is a very famous one uh, for COVID projects at this point of time. Uh, many people think that only BARDA is, is accepting it, but NIAD, NIAD is also accepting various uh, projects relating to COVID, and this solicitation is one of them, um, in addition to many others. So really, the take-home message is that there are plenty of specific solicitations that might be a great fit to what you guys uh, might be proposing. Okay, so if you did not find in, you know, you go on the NIH and you search for a specific solicitation and you did not find the right opportunity, then you can go for the unsolicited. And you can see here, there are a bunch of uh, participating agencies and institutes. For this one, we have the NIH, CDC, and FDA participating. Uh, and you can see the bunch of institutes here from the NIH. What happens is when you submit your project or your application, it will be reviewed, it will basically be submitted to, to the, these, this parent announcement and will be allocated to the relevant uh, institute or agency that would be interested to review your project and fund it accordingly. Uh, in terms of the next due date, it's, it's January 5th next year, so the time to start on writing the application is now. So here I'm uh, just showing you the uh, exact omnibus uh, or the parent announcement from the SBIR uh, program. The NIH and CDC and the FDA participate and within the NIH we have a bunch of institutes participating in as well. Um, in terms of uh, uh, the two types, we have one of them is clinical trials not allowed. The second one is clinical trials are required. Um, in terms of uh, the, the phase program, for phase two it's up to $250,000 over the period of six months and for phase two is up to $1.7 million over two years. The next deadline, as I mentioned, is January 5th next year. This is the exact same um, omnibus solicitation, but for the SDTR program, uh, the, there are literally no differences whatsoever, whether it's in the budget, the period, uh, or the uh, uh, clinical trial not allowed, clinical trial required, and the same due date. Moving on to uh, the NSF or the National Science Foundation, um, it funds roughly about 400 companies every year via its SBIR STR program for approximately about $200 million uh, that goes to 400 companies. Um, so here we have the NSF, SBIR, um, and the STR solicitations uh, by the Directorate for Engineering, Industrial Innovation, and Partnerships. So the R&D should be based 
on innovative technology with potential for great uh, commercial and societal benefits. The program invites proposals from small businesses across a broad range of science and engineering disciplines. If successful, you'll, you'll receive a grant up to $256,000 for six months to 12 months, depending you are you, you decide, uh, basically, that it's a feasibility project. And then once you've got that phase one, you can compete for a second grant of up to $1 million uh, over a two year period with the aim of advancing the technology towards commercial deployment. What is most important is that you have a transformative idea or innovation and that your team's primary goal is the commercialization of the technology. Uh, once again, this is a very broad solicitation. However, there are certain selected topics the NSF is looking to fund, including medical devices, biological technologies, uh, digital health, biomedical, te uh, bi biomedical technologies and biological technologies uh, and pharmaceutical technologies and many, many more. The next due date is really on December 3rd, uh, so the time to start writing the application is right now. And uh, in terms of maximizing your chances of award, um, some, some piece of advice here. Uh, first of all, really seek the insight and interests of uh, the goals of the funding agencies, um, not only by going through the solicitation and reading uh, what, 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 what kind of things they are interested to fund, but also if you scroll down at the end of each solicitation, you will find the contact details of the program offices and research contacts uh, for, these, uh, for, for the specific solicitation you're going for or the parent announcement, and you can contact them directly and get their feedback on your project. So definitely seek insight. We do this on a daily basis and it really helps. Um, in terms of creating the granting strategy, stay the course. Um, stick the, the granting strategy with your long-term R&D plan and not the opposite. Uh, by that I mean do not change the way you are doing things uh, based on a solicitation that you like or think is good to go for. Uh, but quite the opposite, build your long-term R&D plan and, and commercialization plan and include in that plan a granting strategy that will be aligned with your long-term goals. Um, in terms of uh, the weaknesses and finding partners, only if necessary, if you have all the expertise required to conduct the project, uh, should be fine. If you are missing special expertise to complete the project, then we highly encourage you uh, to find partners. So um, this is it for today. Before I finish up, I do want to go uh, and see some of the questions here. Um, so can we please get a copy of the slideshow? Um, all right, no worries. I will definitely send a copy uh, for all of the slides uh, in addition to the YouTube uh, uh, link once we upload it to everyone. Um, let's see one more question here. Well, virtual companies, yes. Um, I mean, the, the short answer is yes. Virtual companies can apply, and we have been successful in winning with, with many of them. Uh, however, you really need to know how to do it. All right, I think we don't have any more questions. So thank you, everyone, for uh, listening in. If you have any, any questions, please feel free to email me directly at amro at freemindconsultants.com uh, or call me at, at the uh, number that you see in front of you while I'm working from home. So uh, feel free to send me a voice message. And uh, I hope you all have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.